Hello and thanks for joining us for the latest installment of Wall Street Buy, Sell, Hold. If you journey to the key mineral districts of Nevada, which just happens to be the world's fourth richest gold region, you wouldn't have to go too far before you came across a project operated by Rye Patch Gold. Joining us now is Bill Howell, CEO of Rye Patch Gold. So Bill, how did this modern gold rush and Rye Patch Gold get started? Well, thanks, Patricia and Chris. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, the, the gold rush has actually started back in about 1980. And uh, since that time, there's been over 180 million ounces of gold produced out of Nevada since that time. So Nevada has really been at the forefront of uh, this modern-day gold rush. And where exactly are your properties located in Nevada? The, all of our assets are in Nevada. Uh, most of uh, are along what we call the Oriana Trend, which is really an emerging uh, gold trend in Nevada. We're just uh, right alongside Interstate 80, which is a four-lane paved highway that goes from San Francisco to Chicago. On our property, we have uh, water and power, and uh, nearby, within five miles of the project, we have uh, people in the town of Lovelock, Nevada. What other things would you say make your company different than some of the other competitors out there that might be interesting to investors? Sure. There are a lot of junior mining companies in the sector, and there are a number of different business models. Uh, one of the business models is what's called the project generator or, or joint venture model. In that case, a company acquires some land that they think is good, and they joint venture it with another company. Company. The joint ventures are generally like a 70-30 joint venture, so that company has given up 70% of the upside of that project. On the other hand, our business model is to develop our own resources. So we control 100% of the lands, we develop the resources ourselves, and as I like to say, you know, exploration, uh, you have to go out and, and try to discover something, and you have to find something, and I think that's where Rye Patch has been very successful over the last four years. We've actually identified four million ounces of gold 1.2 million in the measured and indicated category and 2.7 in the inferred category. So, you know, you can, you can go out and look all you want, but occasionally you have to find, and I think that's what sets Rye Patch Gold apart. All right. so speaking of indicated, inferred, and measured, those are simple words, but sometimes it might complicate people. Well, just as you indicated, Chris, those are levels of confidence. So uh, inferred is the least confident amount of material. We know where it sits, uh, sort of hot what the geometry is, but we're not really comfortable with the, the numbers. Indicated, we've tightened up and we know the geometry, but uh, not necessarily the full extent of the, the the mineralization. And measured is uh, the most confidence level in that we know the geometry, we're certain of the grade, and we know exactly where it sits. So essentially these major mining companies have reserves, they go out there with their bulldozers, they extract this out of the ground, and eventually they're going to cultivate or extract their resources. And then they would go to a junior mining company like you, which has a reserve or a resource of four million ounces gold equivalent, and you would sell that to them. Yeah, um, that's so right. you're mapping it and you would sell your inventory to them. And, and it, what, is there a critical size that you need to get to before you would consider selling? And if so, is there a dollar value or a denomination that would be worth to an investor or to you as the owner of a company? Recently, there was a transaction done in Nevada where a company paid over $400 per ounce in the ground. Uh, that company uh, had about 5 million ounces of, of gold in Nevada. We're sitting right now as Rye Patch with about 4 million ounces of gold. So we think the hurdle is to really get over that 5 million. We'd like to get to 10, but what we're hoping is that we can get over that hurdle of 5 million, and that's going to put us on the radar screens of a Newmont or a Barrick. Once, uh, once we do that, um, if you look worldwide, over the last uh, 12 to 18 months, there's uh, the deals that have been done. If you throw out these outliers like $400 gold per ounce, but you, you just kind of take the average, you end up with uh, $50 per ounce in the ground. Right now, Rye Patch is trading at $12 per ounce in the ground. So that's the, that's the uh, value proposition for shareholders right now. Every share is backed by an ounce of gold in the ground, right? So uh, a lot of people, you know, it's hard to go out and buy an ounce of gold at $1,600 per ounce at today's price. But it's really easy to buy a 50 cent stock. And that stock has a, a very good option value to the gold price. So as gold price goes up, Rye Patch Gold shares should go up. As the value of Rye Patch gets recognized, 
the in situ value of those ounces in the ground should go from $12 per ounce to the average, which is around $50 per ounce. So we could go from a market cap of, say, $40 million up to a market cap of over $200 million. And of the property that Rye Patch owns, how much is untapped? Like, how much still needs to be explored? Well, right now we have uh, 3 million ounces of gold and 40 million ounces of silver. All of that really sits along what we call the Oriana trend uh, between two projects, which is Wilco and Lincoln Hill. Now, we, we have acquired uh, lands in between there, which we call Gold Ridge, that are very perspective. But what we're trying to do is, is build a district. And we think that district has potential for over 20 million ounces of gold. As I mentioned earlier, between uh, Barrick Gold, Rye Patch, and Coeur d'Alene Silver Mines, we've discovered over 10 million ounces of new gold since April of 2009. So it really is an emerging trend. In addition, uh, last September, we acquired a new property called Garden Gate Pass. And that property is just south of one of the largest gold mines in Nevada called Cortez Hills, operated by Barrick. It's roughly about seven miles to the south along some of the major structures. Uh, my background and the background of some of the geologists that work for the company, uh, we have some intimate knowledge of, of the, what we call the Cortez trend. And uh, we believe that the Garden Gate Pass has significant potential. If you look at the deposits that have been discovered uh, to date, they range between 5 million ounces and 20 million ounces of gold. So we're in elephant country. I guess as an ex exploration company, you need money. It costs money to hire people to go out there, drill, and map. Um, how is your financial structure? Are you cash rich? Are you debt laden? How does your balance sheet look? Right now we have zero debt and uh, we have uh, roughly seven million dollars uh, in the bank. And as far as running a junior mining company, a lot of investors, certainly people that look at these small aggressive stocks, they want to make sure that you have skin in the game, aka your own you know, cash on the line. Right. Uh, is that the case with Rye Patch Gold? Management owns about 10 percent of the company and uh, you know we've we feel we're buyers in the market. I mean, we think it's very much undervalued. When, like I said, if you if you look at our uh, ounce, what we're getting per ounce in the ground of about twelve dollars, and the average is fifty dollars, it makes sense to be a buyer. But what would happen if gold went to two thousand or twenty five hundred dollars an ounce? What what would that mean to the fifty dollar potential sale price? Would that go up to sixty or eighty or hundred? Is that possible? Again, the, the each share of rye patch is backed by some ounces of gold in the ground. So as gold price uh, appreciates, the option value of those ounces in the ground appreciates. Technology has changed just about every industry that we can think of today. How has technology changed your business? To get to those uh, sweet spots uh, on the ground, uh, you know, we use satellite technology. We have a variety of new uh, lithogeochemical um, uh, packages that we can run. And just uh, an advance in uh, a modeling of, of known gold deposits has helped immensely. And obviously we have a stock show here and we want to introduce investors with potential home runs, golden opportunities that have yet to be discovered by the large firms. Do you have any partners? Are there any majors that have either A, partnered up with you or looking at your company as a potential future investment? What I can say is if you look at our, our share structure, about 60% of the outstanding shares are held by gold institution or gold funds and institutionally. Really? Our largest is a, a fund called the Sun Valley Master Fund out of Sun Valley, Idaho. They control about 15% of the company. Mm -hmm. If you also look at uh, gold miners that have been involved with us, Ken Ross Gold holds about 15% of the company. So right there, just those two individuals or two groups hold 30% of the company. You've got management with 10%, and we've got a number of other gold funds and, and uh, institutions that hold the remaining 20%. I've been to your properties, and you've got some majors that are surrounding you just over the hills within a half mile or a couple of miles. Which companies are those exactly? Yeah, in the, in the district along with us are uh, Barrick Gold at their Spring Valley. Everybody knows Barrick. Sure, they're the, one of the world's largest gold mining companies. Uh, Coeur d'Alene Silver Mine, which is the largest open pit silver mine in North America, sits immediately adjacent to our, our Lincoln Hill and uh, Gold Ridge properties. And then Newmont uh, has scattered lands throughout the district as well. So we've got some uh, very good neighbors. You have a good balance sheet. You've got blue chip partners, large institutions. You've got great properties with resources that are in the bank or in the ground. What's next for Rye Patch Gold? Well, our, our goal is to get to uh, 10 million ounces uh, of inventory of gold and silver in Nevada. Uh, what we hope to have happen is that uh, we'll get on the, you know, as we build the company, we'll get on the radar screens of these larger 
uh, gold mining companies, and uh, the ultimate goal for investors is uh, the company would be purchased. We see there's about uh, 120 some odd million shares outstanding. Are there any options or warrants out there which would A, cause a little dilution, but also give you additional inflow of uh, funding? Right, there are uh, about 12 million warrants that come due uh, on, oddly enough, December 24th of, of this mm -hmm. year. So uh, if those are all exercised, that'll bring in $4 million into the Treasury. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of dilution, but uh, some cash what, to go with it. What's, what's the price of those options? They're priced at $0.35, cents, so right now they're in the money. So we could uh, probably equate, if you're valuing your stock price at about $12 per gold equivalent, um, and most people are being valued at $50, so you're, you're probably 25% of what your realistic value is, so your stock real that, is right. undervalued. And, and you could realistically support a $2 stock price. Uh, that's correct. I mean, if you just uh, do the math and, like I said, look at the deals that have been done over the last 12 to 18 months, that's what you'll find is that the average is $50. We're getting about 12. So right there, you know, if once we get the word out and we can get some exposure, which is part of this show, that uh, we can uh, maybe see that value gap uh, be... Uh, you know, so that's a five banger right there, as they say. So, Bill, give us some background on the management team, and also tell us about the geologists that you work with. The geologists that work for Rye Patch, uh, we're truly uh, uh, have uh, the opportunity here of a lifetime. I, I call them the, the dream team, in that they've either been part of or uh, led teams that have uh, delivered over 80 million ounces of gold to the portfolios of companies like Placer, Barrick, Agnico Eagle. Uh, Santa Fe Pacific and, and now RIPAC. I'm looking at other companies that have been purchased in your industry or acquired. Right. Large companies, mining companies need to find more resources. They would come in and pay approximately industry standard of about $50 per ounce or, or even up to $400 per ounce. So at $1.52 $1 is your cost per ounce. You've got a big profit margin there from, that, from 2 to 50 cents. That's, that's correct. And I mean, that, the hope would be that uh, we would uh, eventually get to that $50 per ounce in the ground. That would give us a market cap right now of about $200 million. That's, that's the, the value proposition immediately in mm -hmm. the stock. And then uh, with a, a purchase or a buyout, you would hope that you could get another 25 or 30% premium on top of that. Now, when you drill and you uncover the gold, how do you prove to people this is what we see, this is what's down here? Uh, how, how do you illustrate that for, for folks that aren't there? Uh, one of the things we do is we, uh, we sample every five feet on the drill rig. So our, our samples are, are five foot composites of the drill rod. Uh, the drill rod is usually 10 feet long, so there's two samples per drill rod. Uh, mineralization on our property starts immediately at the surface and, and uh, at Lincoln Hill goes to about 500 feet. At Wilco goes down to 1,000 feet. So uh, we drill those holes uh, down to, uh, we get to a certain horizon that we know is not mineralized. Uh, all that material is then, uh, there's a small sample that's collected by the geologist. Those are our char character samples that the geologists log. They log the color, the rock type, the formation, the alteration that they see. Uh, the uh, other sample, the larger sample, is picked up by an uh, independent third-party assay laboratory. Uh, in this case, it's American Assay taken to Reno. They perform all the fire assays. Uh, to verify that uh, all the material is correct, we insert standards and blanks. So these are material that we know the answer to, as well as blanks, of material that we know that there's nothing in, so that we can track uh, the quality of assays back from the lab. All of that information is given to an independent third party who validates it and then uh, does our resource estimates and writes uh, a report called a, a National Instrument 43101, which is the gold standard of reporting, uh, pardon the pun, uh, those, those ounces in the ground. Right now, we think along the Oriana trend on the properties that uh, we own and control, that we have potential for six or seven million ounces. At uh, our Garden Gate Pass project, we believe there's potential for up to something like 20 million ounces, again, very early stage. And we're always looking for uh, very good acquisitions that uh, would uh, be good for shareholders. Japan had a tsunami, and I believe it did shut down some mines because of that natural devastation. Um, how, how does that help or hurt you? Well, again, uh, if you go back just to simple supply and demand fundamentals for gold, uh, you know, with China and India and, again, some of the older mines shutting down, uh, you're looking at uh, supply almost matching demand. Or, and as those middle class uh, grows in those countries, you're going to see demand outstrip supply because there's a finite amount of gold and, 
as I like to say, if uh, you know if it were easy, it'd be a dollar sixty a sack instead of sixteen hundred dollars an ounce. Final word for those um, people that watch television shows: sell your cash for gold. Um, is your advice to them buy, sell, or hold? <laughs> well, I would say hold. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. And you can find out more at RyePatchGold.com, or for more information, contact your investment advisor.